Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Marquise Martin Hayes, and it is Wellness Wednesday. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to connect. How are you? I'm so glad to be with you today. I have an amazing, amazing, amazing guest on the show today, Bruno G. Campos, and he's going to share his story and some insights with you that will change your life if you're open to it. But before we do that, quick word. As a consultant from Rodan and Fields, I want to share this with you. Hold on. Here we go. All right, so Rodan and Fields, I'm a consultant for it. If you have questions, you wanna improve your skin quality, you wanna find out how to remove dark spots. I saw a quote this morning that said this, the only beautiful animal that should have brown spots on it is a giraffe. Rodan and Fields, Marquise Martin Hayes. So let's jump into why we came together this morning and that is to talk about wellness. Our intention, our goal and our focus is for you to find tips, tricks, and encouragement that will get you off the couch, that will help you put the right food in your mouth, and that will help your mind function for you and not against you. All right, let's bring in Bruno. Good morning, brother. How you feel, man? I'm good. I'm good. So, so good. How are you doing, man? Man, I'm good. I'm good. So real quick, I got to let the audience know you and I have come together because both of us are part of Real Talk Real Women Live. Yes, We're part of the men who serve the women. And so we have yep. the honor to connect in that space. I love it. Isn't it? I, how excited are you, bro? I Man, dude. I'm so excited, bro. It's a gift, man. It's yeah. a true gift. I'm, I'm sitting in, I'm sitting every day thinking, all right, RTRW, what we got to, what's next? And what's the next stage for the launch coming up? So I'm stoked about it. I'm stoked. I can't believe it's even happening. Um, me and Davi have been talking for a long time about creating something and then she presented this beautiful opportunity and then she called me and she said, you know what, that, that stuff we've been talking about, it's happening. Yeah. And then we had our, we had our production meeting and I'm like, yup, it's definitely happening. It's Couldn't definitely believe happening. It and it's happening. So excited. Good, man. Well, today I got you on to talk about wellness because in our conversation, I learned a lot about you. Yeah. I learned a lot about you as a man and, and you're an amazing man. What you've done with your life and what you've walked through yeah has to be told everywhere as it's being told. So without further ado, Bruno G. Campos, give us, so we get everybody, so everyone gets an understanding. First of all, before you even get into your story, who are you? Like, let, let that out the bag so people know why they need to stay tuned in the entire time. Me, I am, uh, well, I grew up in Chicago. I was born and okay. raised in Chicago. And then uh, I really didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I'm like, what is my purpose? Um, and I like, I was in Chicago messing around, not really doing anything productive. And yeah. then I just, I, I just needed to, I needed a new start. I needed to get away from those cold winters. Cause you know, you're from Man. Chicago. I, <laughs> I, I'm I, trying to I, move west. I said to myself, the, the summers on a park bench in California gotta be better than the winters at home in Chicago. I could not. My skin, my uh, it was cold. I was like, no, no, no. I need to, I need to head out west. And I've yeah. been here. I've been here for about fifteen years already, and I, I, I love it. It's, I, it's the weather's always beautiful. I mean, when it rains, it rains, but for the most part, I love being out here. Um, That's but good. Me, I'm right now. I'm in love with my life because I get to be. I get to be in a space where I'm, I'm always being creative. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing, I'm acting. I'm okay. I'm doing a lot of stuff with fitness. I'm, I'm going around doing public speaking. Um, cause I'm a cancer survivor and I'm pretty sure yes. we'll get into that. Yes. Um, but I'm able to, to go around and, and, and tell my story and, and go around touching people's lives, um, through my story. Yeah. And it's just it, every day that, that I get to do what I do, yeah. It's a blessing. It's a blessing when you wake up and you know that you're going to be doing something with your life that that yeah. brings you joy, that brings you happiness. Yeah. And yeah, and, and that feeling of being happy all the time is just it's amazing. It's a blessing. It's yeah. a, it, it took it took a lot of work to get there. But once mm -hmm. you're there, you want to protect it and, and take care of it because I I love waking up in the morning and I love being who I am. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So people, did you just hear what the man said? Number one, he loves his life. He loves doing what he does. He loves waking up and being who he is. Now I know statistics tell us most of you don't, and that's not your fault. It's just that life happens and yet it's your responsibility to make the adjustments. So Bruno, with all that you do, lay it on us, man. How did you get there? What, like your weight loss to, it, there's just so many elements. I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let okay. you charter the conversation today and I'm just going to listen. Well, my journey, my journey started in Chicago. Um, I, I grew up like most, most um, uh, minorities. We grew up in, in a, in a poor uh, disenfranchised area. Like mm-hmm. it was, it was uh, not a lot for us to do, but hang out in the streets and, and, and mess around. And then we come home and, you know, my dad and my mom were, you know, going through an ugly divorce and mm-hmm. it, just, it was just, it was bad. So then as I got older, I started doing, you know, more intense things like skipping school and maybe yeah. drinking a little bit and, you know, mm-hmm. dabbing a little bit with the drug, you know, it was just, it was bad. And yeah. then, it, you know, and it's like we were talking earlier, I felt like I really wasn't, um, listened to or paid attention to or sometimes mm. i felt like sometimes i felt like i wasn't i was invisible and yeah so, so what i did was um i married young i married yeah. young because i was looking for that for yeah. that love that I, maybe i wasn't yeah. getting at home yeah and and i got married and 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 you know i i thought i was happy and and when i wasn't happy i felt like i wasn't doing something right so i mm-hmm. forced myself to be in a situation that maybe i wasn't prepared for so I, mm-hmm. I, I was in that situation for a long time. And then just one day I just, I, you know what? I had enough. Um, yeah. I, I, I walked out of that situation. I came home looking for support from my family and it wasn't there. And, and, yeah. and I said, you know what? I'm, that's it. I need, I need a sign. I need a sign from God. Please tell me what to do. So I was yeah. sitting in my room and I was trying to figure out my life and what my next steps were going to be. And well, Wait, I, before I, you tell us that, Bruno, before you tell us that. Because some people are still stuck in that situation, knowing they don't need to be there, knowing it's toxic. What happened or helped you decide it's time for a change? I'm done. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to try life again. It's that feeling of, of, of not being able to get out. Like I couldn't breathe and I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't, I, I didn't want to do anything. I, 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 I always just wanted to cry or I yeah. ate or, or I just didn't yeah. want to do anything. And, yeah. and I sat down and, and I saw, you know, you watch TV and you see people happy all the time. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Why yeah. Those, yeah. Why are those people so happy? What, what do they got to be so happy about? And then, mm-hmm. and then I just, I realized I cannot live the re- I, This cannot be why I'm on this planet. I, can, I was mm-hmm. not born to be miserable. I was not born to cry all the time. I was not. Come I, on. I wasn't meant for this. So yes. I, I, I was like, I need to figure out what my next step was going to be. And, yeah. and I was like, I need a sign. I need a sign, you know, yeah. anything. So then I remember, mm-hmm. turning, I remember turning the TV on. I was in, this, I was in Chicago with my mother. And I remember, okay. turning the, I remember turning the TV on. And it was one of those uh, travel commercials, like those for yeah. tourism. Uh-huh. And it's, uh-huh. and the first thing I heard when I turned the TV on is like come to California and 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 visit the sunny palm trees and blah 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 and I'm like yep that's it mm-hmm. that's my mm-hmm. next step I don't have any, mm-hmm. I don't have nobody in California I don't have a plan I don't mm-hmm. know what I'm gonna do mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. where I'm gonna be so mm-hmm. I was like all right so what do I do now I got no money I got no family I got no car I got nothing but you know what I remember wow. that I sold my Xbox. I sold my Xbox. Come on. You let go of the Xbox. I sold the Xbox. I sold my <laughs> Xbox. I sold uh-huh. a, I sold my, my stereo. And yeah. then I had I had just enough money for a one-way ticket to, to California. Okay, Paul. And, and, you said one-way ticket. You Yeah. There's, there's, somebody needs to get that. A one-way ticket. One there way. is no plan B. Come on, go no. ahead. That was my plan. My plan was to go to California and and figure it out so yeah i remember i remember i bought the ticket and it was it was going to be in, in in about two weeks and i and i remember right. telling i remember telling my mother okay mom i bought a plane ticket i'm going to california in two weeks can you please take me to the airport she's like yeah yeah yeah, sure no problem so uh, the days came and you know I, I i didn't take much i i grabbed a duffel bag i put maybe a pair of pants in there maybe some underwear mm-hmm. a pair of socks not mm-hmm. a whole lot i didn't take because i yeah. couldn't afford 
they couldn't afford luggage, you know? So I understand. I, I, I understand. I took, I took the necessities and then I put the duffel bag by the door and then the morning came and, and I got ready and, and, and I'm standing by the door and, and my mom's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? It's time to go. And she's like, she oh, forgot? Just, <laughs> oh, no. She, she didn't think I was going to go. She's like, oh, oh you're serious. Oh, oh you're serious. <laughs> and she's like, Mijo, I have to go to work. I can't take you. I What? Let me tell you, I ended up taking myself on the bus, on the train. I took the orange yes. line to the yeah, airport. Another route. I, took, yes. I took myself to the airport and I was, and then I was getting phone calls from family like, dude, where are you, I, where are you going? I'm like, what do you mean? I, I've been telling you guys yeah, for two yeah, weeks. I'm yeah, going to California. Yeah, yeah. He goes, are yeah. you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> serious so about I, my life? I swear to you, I was on that train. I was, I was... I was. I don't remember being scared. I remember being okay. excited because okay. I, I I knew I knew that whatever whatever was waiting for me in California couldn't be as bad as what I was feeling in Chicago. I mean, yeah. I love my I yeah. love my family. Yeah. But but my my mom had her life. My sister had her life. Everybody had mm -hmm. their life, and everybody had it somewhat figured out. And and mm -hmm. I was just lost. So I just yeah. I'm, out. I'm out. I'm out. I don't yeah. care. I'll figure it yeah. out. This so, is called Bruno. What you're talking about. I'm sorry to interrupt, but what you're talking about is real faith. Like people talk, I believe, I believe. No, no, belief looks like what you're describing, bro. I, I remember I got to the airport, I boarded the plane, and then I, I, I got on the plane. We took off, and then I didn't even on the plane. Even on the plane, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do when I get off the plane? I just, I was just chilling. I was just like, I'm gonna figure it out. I, whatever. So we, it was a four hour flight. And then I, I remember it was the best sleep I've had in a long time. I, I, I slept on the plane. That's I landed, cool. I landed. And then I said, okay, what's my plan? Now what do I do? And then yeah. there was, there was, there was, um, there were no Ubers. There were no, right. uh, there was no like real social media. Like there was nothing like that at the time. So I'm yeah. like, okay, okay, what do I do? Okay. So I called it. I remember my, my family talking about, we had family in, in West Covina. So okay. I said, okay, that's where I'm going to go. Of course, I picked a place that was so far that it took a chunk of my money because taxis okay. are super expensive, but the yeah. taxi, taxi was taking me to West Covina and. And then once we were getting close to West Covina, um, he, I remember the taxi guy telling me, all right, what's the address? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, Come on, man. Come I said, on. you know what? I, you know what? Drop me off. Drop me off at the mall. At the mall. Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, whatever, whatever's, whatever, whatever my, my plan is, it's going to start at the mall. So I got to the mall, and he dropped me off in the parking lot. And I didn't really want to go inside the mall because I didn't have no money to buy nothing at the mall. Right, right, but, right. But I'm like, okay, I'm at the ball. Now I need to center myself here at what's going on. So I started asking around. I'm like, okay, I remember in Chicago, my mom, when we were little, we used to go to the laundromat. And every time we would go to the laundromat, they'd have these cork boards um, in, on the walls. And in these cork yeah. boards, they're always selling vacuum cleaners, uh, rooms for yeah. rent, like yeah. all yeah. kinds of crazy yeah. stuff. So I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the laundromat and I'm going to pray to God that somebody's looking for a roommate. Mm -hmm. So I went to the laundromat and then sure enough, the cork board was there. The, the, the paper with the little stickies were on there. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And I, I took it, I called the number and, and they're like, how soon can you move in? I'm like, I'm going to go right now. <laughs> tonight? <laughs> tonight. I'm moving in tonight. Cause, and she's like, do you have stuff? I'm like, I don't have stuff. Don't worry. I don't got yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I went in there and she's like, this is your room. And it was, it was a room. It was there was nothing in there. No, no curtains. No bed. No, no nothing. Absolutely wow. nothing. It was just. Wow. It was just. It was just a mattress. No sheets. Yeah. No blanket, just a mattress. And wow. then she told me. She told me this is your room. Um, yeah. You only have access to your room. Um, the kitchen is extra, but you know you can't. I didn't have access to the kitchen. I didn't have access to nothing. It was just a room. Oh, wow. Wow. So then, but it was okay because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had a roof over. I was good. I was good. Yeah, you can do where so, you can sleep. Yeah, I had somewhere to sleep. That was good. So my my next plan was okay. I just gave this lady all of my money. I had like maybe thirty dollars left. So I went to I went to the dollar store and I bought like thirty dollars worth of uh, top ramen. Understood. Uh, that's 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 what I was. I was like, what it okay, is. Need, that's what I had to do. So I had thirty dollars worth of top ramen. I had thirty days to figure out what my next move was going to be. So mm -hmm. I, um, 
okay, I need a job. That was my next plan. So the next yeah. morning, I, I, I hit the pavement and I got three jobs. I ended up with three. I, didn't, I was not going to come home, so I had work. I ended up getting three jobs. Good. Check out my plan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so job number one, I needed a job that was going to feed me. Yeah. So I, I got a job working overnight at Carl's Jr. Okay. So every, so every night I was coming home with food. So I had food. Now I had a yeah. job that, that, was, that was nourishing me. Yeah. Then, um, I didn't mention this, but the apartment, I did not have access to the shower. I had access to the toilet. Okay. I didn't have okay. access to the shower because okay. I, I, I had to pay for water and stuff. And then I'm like, okay, I can't afford that. So no. So now, yeah, I, needed, yeah. now I needed a job that was going to provide that. So, and plus, I was a little over because I was depressed back home. So I, I got yeah. a little heavy. I was a heavy yeah. beer drinker, pizza eater, yeah. like all that stuff. Yeah. So like, now I need to lose weight because I'm in California now. Now I got to look good. Yeah. Now you got to look gotta, the part. Now I got to look the part. And now I, yeah. I got to shower. I need a shower. So I'm like, I, I got to yeah. get a job. So, I, so down the street, there was a 24-hour fitness in West Covina. Okay. I got a job. I got a job in West Covina, 24-hour yep. fitness. So now, yep. I had a, now I had a job that was feeding me. I had a job yep. that was going to help me look good and shower. Yep. Yep. Then I got me a third job at DSW Shoes because I just needed a job. I still Understood. had – there was still a, a little bit more hours in the day that I could squeeze in some work. So I was working yep. three jobs. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and now, I was, now, now I had structure. So mm. now, now I had structure. So now I have a place to live. I have income. I have food. Mm-hmm. I have food on my plate. I have, I'm good. Mm-hmm. So now, now, now that I had all that, now my next move was, okay, this can't be my life though. Like this, I, this, I'm not going to die working at Carl's Jr. 24 hour fitness and deals with shoes. What's right. my plan? And hold on, hold on. Cause you said something, man, that was so key, bro. So many times we go get the three jobs. We go create structure outside of the vision and peace where we actually see ourselves. You went for where you felt like you needed to be that level of peace and then created a structure. A lot of us are stuck in our structures, not sure how to get where we need to go for the peace that you discovered on the front end. And it's interesting that you brought that, that you say that in your story and somebody needs to hear that structure is extremely important, but a structure on a foundation that doesn't match who you are just leaves you miserable. It does. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, go ahead. And, 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 and working these three jobs, it didn't make me, it, it didn't tire me. It didn't exhaust mm-hmm. me. It didn't make mm-hmm. me miserable. Like I was, mm-hmm. I was good because I was happy that I was providing for myself for the first mm-hmm. time. I was like on my own. I, it was my life. Mm-hmm. So, and that, that was the part that excited me the most because now I'm in a situation where whatever happens, there are no, there are no outside forces that, that, that I can blame on. Like, yeah. This is my life. The, the direction mm-hmm. that it goes, it's going to be on me. So mm-hmm. I have to make sure that I make, that I try to make smart choices. So yes. I sat down and I'm like, okay, now what, my, what is my plan? Now that I got all this, what is my plan? My plan was to come to LA, um, number one, to get away. But really, um, I wanted to work in radio. Radio okay. was really what I wanted to do. Okay. But I didn't know. I was like, I have no experience. I have like, what am I going to do? I rem- and then this is how so faith cool. works. This is how faith works. I'm gonna tell you. Break it down. So Break was, it down. I was, I was, I was, I was. I'm a true believer in, in God. God is what few. This God navigates my life. You know. Okay. And 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 God has always, I believe, has always took care of me. God always throws little hints of what I should be doing. When I don't know what yeah. I'm supposed to be doing, He's like, well, Yeah. You know what? You seem a little lost. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. do this for you. So, yeah. I was at 24 Hour Fitness and, and you know, mm-hmm. it was the first time me being around so much diversity because where I grew up, it was either it was either all, all Mexicans or all Blacks. It was a 1% okay. uh, in my high school. It was a 1% of whites and then like uh, less, wow. than one per, less than 1% of Asians. It was all Latino wow. or Blacks. So wow. that was... So now, now, now I'm in, in West Covina at a 24-hour mm-hmm. fitness, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing Jewish people come in. I'm mm-hmm. seeing a, a lot more Asians, a hell of a lot more white people. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Oh, so, and, then, and, and, then, and not just that. Not just that. These were interesting people because they all had inter- mm-hmm. interesting lives. They were, we had actors coming in. We had producers coming in. We had yeah. people just doing all kinds of stuff. Like where I came from, you know, we were just you know, working uh, regular nine to five jobs, you know, just right, to get right. by. But these people had careers. Mm-hmm. These people had, you know, went to school and they studied and they got great mm-hmm. jobs. So it was, it was, it was always amazing for me because people, I always, I always ended up talking to people. For some reason, I always ended up being a good talker. So I always ended up talking to That's a lot cool. of people. And, 
and I remember one one of the producers. He this is this is how far back he was. I'm about to date myself. He was a he was a makeup guy for the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, that's way back. Way back. That's way back. And, <laughs> and we were he was talking about how he did the makeup for the vampires and all that stuff. And I was like, that's amazing. Like yeah. I'm actually like I get to see your work on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then he was a very nice guy. He's like, you know what? I'm really tired of talking about work. But I'm what, what about you? What do you I, what do you want to do? And I and I'm like, you know what? I, I want to work in radio. Mm-hmm. I really want to work in radio. And and every day, every day that he would come in, we would talk about that. And, and one particular day that I was talking about it. Mm-hmm. One of the members walked in and he worked for a Latino radio station. Okay. And then he, he kept hearing me talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And then one day he just like, you know what? I am sick of hearing the same stuff from you every single day. He gave me his card. I'm like, take this. I already spoke to the promotions uh, director. She's waiting to have an interview with you. Uh, Come on. Blah, blah, blah. So I, I Come had an interview. On. I had an interview. Because you kept pushing your vision. But, let me tell you, but let me yeah. tell you about this yeah. radio station. Every yeah. day that yeah. I, when I left my house in the morning on my yeah. way to 24 Hour Fitness, yeah. there was there was a bar. There was a bar. It was called mm-hmm. Margarita Jones in West Covina. Okay. Okay. Margarita Jones. And every day on, on Thursday nights, the station vehicle would do promotions there. And it was, mm. um, it was, it was, it was the name of the, the vehicle was wrapped and it had the, the, the call numbers yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to work there one day. That's where I'm going to be. That's blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. me. Yeah. And then it was, and then I, I went to the interview and, and, uh, she hired me. Yeah. She hired me. And my first, um, this is going to be so funny. My first day on the job was working yeah. a promotion at Margarita Jones. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, wow. where, I would, where I would see the station vehicle all the time, yeah. and I'm like, "This is this is what it's yeah. this is exactly what what I put into what I spoke into existence." You know? Yes, you did. And, yes, you did. And, okay, hold on. We got eight minutes, and I know there's some other high elements you want to mention. So it's on you. I just want them to get it. If whatever you want to put out, but I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. So fast forward. Um. I remember I was out here and and I met I was at a party. Okay. I was at a I was at a party and I this this woman walked in. Mm-hmm. Well, now she's a woman now. We were kids back then. But yeah. She walked in and and um, it was something about her. I'm like, I need to I need to talk to her. Mm-hmm. And and we ended up talking. We hit it off and then we started dating. And then four months later, I was married. Okay, I got married, okay. and okay. then well, I we not we didn't we lived together, and then okay. but we were on we were on our way to get married, and then I remember okay. we were talking about marriage, and I didn't speak about this, but um, years back, back in two thousand three, mm-hmm. uh, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Okay, I was I was traveling the country, and and I remember uh, during during my time on the road. I, I started to notice that my my one of my test my one of my testicles was was growing and and it was growing mm-hmm. and growing and I I didn't want to say anything because I was I was yeah. embarrassed or I was ashamed. Yeah, I understand. So so I ke- I kept it to myself, thinking that it was you know if I don't if I don't acknowledge it, maybe it'll go away or mm-hmm. I don't know what my thinking was, but you know it turns out it turns out that in that in that process we all think the same. A lot of men yeah. do the same thing. A lot yep. of men did the same thing yep. I was doing. So I, I kept it to myself. Yep. And then I remember, I remember one day I just, at this point, one was like this and one was like this. Oh, and, man. and, and I woke up with a lot of pain and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't take the pain anymore. So I called my mom and I said, mom, I think I'm going to go to the doctors. And she's like, me, oh, you don't have insurance. Don't do it. And I said, you know what? You're right. I, I'm probably just, I don't know, indigestion or whatever. Sure, no, sure. I, I couldn't take the pain. I went to, I went to a clinic and the doctor mm-hmm. came out and he's like, mm-hmm. I need you to disrobe. He started, you know, mm-hmm. giving me a physical. And, mm-hmm. and then when he pressed on my, on my abdomen, couldn't take it. He's like, you know what? Um, I don't need to do an, I don't, I don't think an autopsy is necessary. I can see what's happening. You need to fly home to Chicago. You need to see a doctor, but I think I'm 99.9% sure that you have testicular cancer. Wow. And and I knew that. I knew that already. Wow. I yeah. knew that already. But mm-hmm. it's one thing to to know yourself and you think that you could be wrong, but then when mm-hmm. you hear from a doctor like shoot. I, okay. Yeah. 
So then, yeah. and then I'm like, okay, great. I have cancer now. And then in my family, there's a, there's a, a large history of, of family members that have died of cancer. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well, that's it, you know? All right, whatever. So I went, I went home, I went home and, 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 and everybody was crying. Everybody was sad. Everybody, everybody was just yeah. already out. Just, oh my God, he's going to die. He's going to die. Oh my God. And then yeah. I, rem- I remember telling my family, I can't do this. You guys are, you guys are driving me nuts. Um, if, if you guys cry one more time, if you guys, you know, I, if you guys are going to be this way, you guys are yeah. bringing me down. You guys are really yeah. bringing me down. Yeah. If, 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 if I'm here to, to, to die of cancer, let me do it with happy. Let me enjoy mm-hmm. whatever, whatever last days I have. Let me enjoy. Right. Yeah. So, you know, every, you know, my perspective changed. I try to be positive. I went to the doctors, you know, they prepped me, they, 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 um, prepped me for surgery. They took the tumor mm-hmm. out and, mm-hmm. you know, thank, thankfully, and, and thank God, um, they removed the tumor and mm-hmm. I, it's been 18 years that I've been cancer free. And, so cool. <laughs> and then I remember, I remember going through the, through the, through the radiation process and everything. And, and then um, the last day, I remember telling myself, if I get through this alive, I'm going to go back to California and I'm going to pick up my life where I left it, you mm-hmm. know? So then um, the doctor told me, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're, as of now, you're cancer free, but um, you're never going to have kids. It's something that's not going to happen for you. Yeah. And I was, I was, I was 23. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. whatever. Wow. You know, who's, who's really thinking about having kids at 23? I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, you know what? douches i'm out i told i told my mom i'm like you know what i'm gonna pack that duffel bag i'm out i'm gonna go to california and 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 figure it out and then when i got to california i met i met i met the girl and we ended up getting married and then Mm -hmm. well we didn't get married right away i remember talking about getting married and i I remember telling her okay things are getting serious you want to talk about marriage i need to tell you i i recently went through cancer they told me i was never gonna have kids and if that's if kids are something that it's in your future, then right. it, we're not, we're, it's not going to work. So yeah. I, I just wanted to be upfront with you. And then yeah. what she said to me was, listen, to me, the only person that can tell you that you cannot have kids is God. It's good. God it's is good. the only one that can it's tell good. you that. So let's do it. So we got married and then three, three years later, yeah, she got pregnant. Three years later, she got pregnant, and my my daughter my daughter Mila was born. Yes. And I, I don't know. You have kids, so yeah. When I was I was a partier, I was a drinker. I was yeah. I, I was all that stuff. Yeah. But I remember I remember when 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 Brenda was when she was in labor, yeah. And and she was I saw the pain that she was going through. Yeah, and I re- I remember speaking to God. I remember speaking to Him. I said, "If you if you bring me this child, healthy, and and Brenda comes out okay, and everything's yeah. okay, and my daughter is is here, yeah, I promise you, I will be the best. I will be the best human I can be. Yeah. I will be the best example to her, to my yeah. daughter. I will. I, yeah. I'll just. I'll give up drinking. I'll do all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And 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 when she was born." My daughter was the happiest. She was born with so much hair. She was so happy. <laughs> and and let me That's tell great. you, I I was one that I was the first one to to start drinking. And I was the last one to go down. That's who I mm-hmm. was. Yeah. I was a club goer. I, I was all yeah. that stuff. But when my daughter was born, it was it was as if I never I was never a drinker because giving mm-hmm. up drinking was it was very easy for me because I was mm-hmm. doing it for her. And yeah. then and then just. It was, I, I just wanted to be, I remember how I grew up and that's yeah. not how I want her to grow up. Yep. So that's Understood. my mission. That, that's my mission. That was my mission. Yeah. But just because my daughter was born, it didn't guarantee that everything else was going to be okay. That's correct. That's it, correct. It there, 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 because there's never any guarantees. So that's correct. the, my relationship and my bond with my daughter has always mm-hmm. been unbreakable, but that's you good. know, my, my marriage my marriage was falling apart. Um, mm-hmm. I wasn't happy. She wasn't happy. We just weren't mm-hmm. making each other happy. And, mm-hmm. and, through, and through that unhappiness, yeah. um, uh, it, I don't blame her. I don't blame – I blame myself. Understood. Because I, I know how I feel. I'm in control of my feelings. 
and mm-hmm. I knew I wasn't happy, and yet I forced myself to keep going. So mm-hmm. whatever happened in that in that situation, and yeah. for as long as it lasted, it I put it on me. It's my Understood. fault because I know I know what I I know I could have done things differently, and I and I right. didn't. So. I allowed myself to be in an uncomfortable situation that made me unhappy, miserable, mm-hmm. and, and what have you. And again, I don't blame her. I blame myself. But in that situation, yeah. I all that hard work, all that hard work mm-hmm. I did at 24 Hour Fitness when I got here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. gone. I, I got up to maybe my highest 275 to almost 280 pounds. Wow. And, wow. And, and it was... And it was it was 280 pounds of denial, denial because we're like, dude, you're you're freaking huge. And I'm like, oh man, I was I was still wearing the clothes I was wearing when I first got here. I was I was like, no way. I was like, doing it like this, a little bit tighter though, huh? Yeah, I'm like, couldn't really get my hands. Like, but you know, but I, I, it, yeah, yeah, I was I was I was huge. I was yeah. huge. Yeah. And and then I, I I was in complete denial about it. I thought I was because I I was fit, so I, I'm just a little I'm just a little thicker. But no, I was mm-hmm. I was huge. I, and then I, my situation at home got to got to a, a, a point where I just couldn't breathe anymore. The same the same feeling, and yeah. and there were signs that I recognized from before. Yeah. So I'm like, I gotta get out. Yeah. I gotta get out. So yeah. I left, and again. Just like before, when I left Chicago to go sleep in an empty room, I left my place and I went to go sleep on a floor of a gym. Mm-hmm. I was literally, I was literally homeless for like maybe a month. I was sleeping okay. on the floor of a gym, and and while I was there, I remember like what happened to me. Like where where did I stray? You know, mm-hmm. God was God had my back, and and what happened was, I realized now that. He was God was always speaking to me. Mm-hmm. He was always speaking to me, but mm-hmm. I ch- I chose not to listen to him because I became selfish because I I was already in a comfort zone where yeah. I have my I have my daughter I have I have this beautiful home I have a, a beautiful wife and and I don't need nothing else. But mm-hmm. I wasn't happy, mm-hmm. so now you know it's God giveth God taketh away, mm-hmm. and and I I had nothing. I had absolutely, wow. I didn't, I didn't have like nothing. So I was at the, I was sleeping in the floor of a gym and, and I'm like, this is, this is not where I, this is not why I'm here. This is not why I yeah. beat cancer. This is yeah. not where I'm supposed to be. So I, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I remember who you are. I got to remember who I am. So, yeah. and, and, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta get right. I gotta get right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't have anything. I don't own anything. I don't have a TV. Yeah. I don't have nothing to distract me, nothing to, to, to do, but to pray Mm -hmm. and to meditate. Mm -hmm. And when you're alone and you're alone with your, and when you're alone and alone with your thoughts, Mm -hmm. you, you, you hear, you hear his voice, you hear Mm -hmm. your inner voice, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. hear, you're like, okay, I get it. So I found peace within myself. I had, I accepted the things that went wrong in my life. I Mm -hmm. learned not to blame anybody. Okay. This is your fault. This is your fault. You cannot spend the rest of your life blaming other people for your mistakes. So I took, so I took, I took ownership of of my life. I took responsibility yes. for for everything. I took accountability for the things that I did wrong. And then yes. I got up. I got up and I and I told my friend, homeboy, you're a trainer. Get me right. Make okay. this. Okay. This is not. This is not happening. This is not working yeah. for me. And yeah. then yeah. and then he he. I remember him telling me, "What's what's your motivation?" And mm-hmm. my motivation in the beginning, though it it drove me in the beginning, it drove okay. me. Um, I needed to be better. There was a person in my life that that intruded in my life. There was Got an it. intruder in my life, Got and it. and he and I felt that the reason why he was able to to come into my life was because of the way he looked. So yeah. I, I felt like I need to look better. So I'm Understood. like, make I was like, make me look better than that. And yeah. then my, my, my trainer was like, dude, I'm going to make you look 10 times better than that. And I told him, bro, listen, you don't got to do all that. Just make sure that when I tie my, <laughs> just make sure when I tie my shoe, my head don't explode. That's all I care about. <laughs> That's all I want. Yes, I don't want, yes, I don't yes. want my head. Cause you know, when you, when you bend down your head, yeah, yeah. Pop, yeah, I yeah, just don't yeah. want that feeling no more. 
Right. So right. I I worked hard. I trained with mm-hmm. him every day. I was I was I was training him with him every day. Then I was I, I was I was training in boxing too. I was I was just doing everything. Yeah. And then and then okay now I need to now I need to learn to eat right again. So then I took a mm-hmm. part time job at a meal prep company where I was able to track my macros okay. and and I and I learned how to eat and I, I was I was putting all of the elements together again. I was I was yeah. getting my I was taking control of my life. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I started to notice my body change. My body, and and it was changing, and and it was it was it was it was looking better, better yeah. than 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 it did when I was younger. I was like, I'm I'm 40, and I've never looked. What the hell? And I was yeah. I was I was like, yeah. okay, you know. But that was good. That was uh-huh. good. But then when 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 I started to feel good. And I started to, and when I started to feel good and look good, and, and my confidence was, you know, where it was better than what it was before. Yeah. Um, opportunities, the the opportunities started coming again. Mm-hmm. God was like, okay, he's right now. Like he he's he's exactly where I want him to be. He took control of his life. He's 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 listening to me. He's talking to me. He's coming to see me every Sunday. Like you know, that's yeah so, yeah. So then I went to an event, and then. You know, this is this is what's the turning. This is what changed my life. This is the moment okay. that changed my life. Okay. I was at an event. My friends, my because I when I started training in boxing, so I started hanging around with a lot mm-hmm. of fighters. So okay. there was there was an event in Burbank at the Marriott in Burbank, and and I went, and and my friend was supposed to fight, and then I was I went to go see him, and I was there, and I and I was already like, man, I was like wearing tighter shirts, and I was tanning, <laughs> I was looking, you know, and yeah. then I remember yeah. I was walk I was walking away, and then. Danny Trejo was there. Okay. The actor. Actor Danny. I know, Trejo. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And he was there. He was there. He was there with his publicist. He was there with okay. his publicist. And I remember walking away and Danny Trejo's publicist, he grabbed my arm and he and he and, and he turned me around and was like, where the hell have you? And then he looked at me, he's like, Oh, oh, you're nobody. And then I know what? it sounds kind of it, it, it interesting. Sounds up, it sounds messed up, but I'm like, um, yeah, okay. Sorry. And then he goes, no, 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 don't take offense. I just thought you were somebody important. Okay. <laughs> it gets better. That's two. That's two. That's two. And then, and then I'm like, okay. And then he goes, no, no, no. I, sorry. Let me explain. You look like you look like an actor. Are you an actor? And I said, no, no, I'm not. And he's like, has anybody ever told? <laughs> he's so funny. Has anybody ever told you you have this whole uh, Ricky Martin, Mario Lopez thing going? And I said, I no, see it. <laughs> no, no one's ever said that to me. He goes, are you an actor? I'm like, no, I, I've never, I've never done any acting. He's like, let me, let me, let me send, let me introduce you to my friend, Bobby. And I said, okay, who is she? And then she was, she was, uh, she ran an acting school in Sherman Oaks. One of the okay. best, it's one of the okay. best. And, uh, he's like, go check, check it out. And I said, okay. I called, I called Bobby and I said, you know what? Um, I, I heard about your school and. She said, are you an actor? I'm like, no. She's like, you know what? My classes are booked. I don't have time for newbies. I don't want to train. I don't have time for okay. this. And I said, okay. I Clear enough. I said, your friend gave me your card. He said you were a nice person. <laughs> you were a nice person and that you uh-huh. were, you were going to help me. And she's like, what friend? And I, I, I dropped his name and she's like, oh, you know him. And I'm like, well, I don't know him. But he, he told me about you and he said I could learn yeah. from you. He's like, yeah. okay. Come yeah. Thursday, come Thursday. And I said, okay, she didn't tell me, she didn't tell me that on Thursdays, that on Thursdays is showcase night. So on showcase okay. night, cause like all week, the, mm-hmm. the actors go in and they, and they, they get their scenes and they learn their dialogue and they know how they're yeah. going to, they, they know right. how they're going to do everything. And, yeah. And, and yeah. yeah, all that stuff. I show up and then and, and first class is free. I didn't have to pay anything. And then uh-huh. they, they give me my, my script, my script pages and mm-hmm. my dialogue, and it's like seven mm-hmm. pages, and then like oh. memorize, <laughs> memorize it, and you're gonna go on stage at nine. I'm like, wait, what? What? He goes, yeah. I said, okay, sure. Wow. And, and I've never in my life, never in my life, held a script in my hand. I've yeah. never, I've never performed anywhere, like, like not even yeah. karaoke, like nothing. Yeah. So then I, I went to the area where all the actors were like rehearsing, and and I'm just like a what the hell? And every, everybody's doing this and, 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 and all that. And I'm like, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to memorize this dialogue. Right. Let alone and, the movements. Right. So, 
you know what? I, I managed to, to, to learn most of it. And then I would just BS the rest of it. Cause I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm never going to come back. So I went on stage and, and, and we, I performed and it was bad. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, sure. It was bad. It is, yeah. But, yeah. but when I was done, people, people clapped and, mm-hmm. you know, and whether I was good or not, it yeah, was, yeah, it was, yeah. it was an adrenaline, it was an adrenaline rush for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it was, mm-hmm. it was, it was a feeling that I've never felt before. It mm-hmm. felt good. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my God, I, you know what? Let me try it one more week. Okay. And, then, and then I, and then I tried it another week and then another week. And then I yeah. don't know, I don't know if I got better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. As as I kept going, I, yeah. I got an I got an agent, I got a publicist, I got a Come manager, on, man. I got I got commercials, I got parts in movies. I Come became on. I, so I you know Come on. I, I, I guess it was it was working out all right. It was yeah. it was it was it was good. Yeah, it was right. and, and fast forward fast forward to today, mm-hmm. today here I am. I get I'm I'm getting ready to we are getting ready to launch launch a show together yeah um and it's it's super exciting it's yep. it's you know my my part in the show is is some is a passion that i've had forever um i get to help people uh fulfill their fantasies because you know when i beat cancer i'm like i've always wanted i've always wanted to compete i've always wanted okay. to com- okay. compete okay. In, as a boxer but okay. i was always scared i was always yeah. scared i'm like no I mean- i'm not gonna that doesn't look fun. Yeah, but, you know. it's, it's scary. But yeah, so then yeah. I re- I remember when when I I when I went through cancer, it it, mm-hmm. it happened so fast that I didn't really I didn't really have time to sit back and really think about what I was going through at the time. Okay. It wasn't a, it wasn't until I started working with the American Cancer Society that mm-hmm. I started going on stage and telling my story and telling people mm-hmm. what I went through. And as I was telling my first story on stage, I remember crying. I, I'm gonna cry right now. I remember crying because I never gave my family the respect. Mm-hmm. I never mm. gave them the respect to to be there for me. Like my mom, she cried. She cried a yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. I remember. I remember she was alone in her room, mm-hmm. and and she was praying. She was praying out loud. And she was praying mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was very selfish back then. Like, I just, I didn't mm-hmm. care. Like, I just, I just, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. If I'm not, just get me through this. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't really give anybody a chance to be there for me. Mm-hmm. So I got on stage and I was telling people my story. And I remember just that, that I was scared. I was, I was scared. I, mm-hmm. when I was going through it, I was scared. I just, yeah, I, I just didn't have time to like really be scared, but I, mm-hmm. I could have died. I seriously could have yeah. died. I remember the doctor telling me, you know, you're, you're, you're like hours or days away from your tumor rupturing and the blood, the, the cancer spilling all over your blood and you're, you could have died. And, and wow. I remember, I remember being on stage mm-hmm. And and I'm like, wow! If I would have died then, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't know what being a father feels like. I wouldn't know yeah. what having a daughter like. All these yeah. blessings are in my life. I took, yeah. you know, and I I realized that day that I'm never ever gonna take anything that happens to me in my life for granted. Mm-hmm. From the moment I open my eyes when I wake up in the morning, I thank God yeah. because I have another day of life. Yeah. When, when, when I when I go to work, I thank God that during this yeah. whole pandemic, I still have a job. Yeah. You know that I'm that I'm able to provide for my daughter. That my daughter yeah. feels unconditional love. You know yeah. those. Are, so I think that's what that's what helps me stay centered and focused mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. N- no matter what, like it's so easy to to lose, especially in this industry, to lose lose yourself and lose focus. Yep. You know, like mm-hmm. my first like my first time. I would, I was working out at 24 hour fitness in, in Hollywood and okay. you know, in Hollywood, every, every day there's a red carpet somewhere. Every day yep. there's somebody's taking pictures, somebody's taking pictures of somebody walking on some kind of carpet. I don't know what the heck. And yep. then I remember, I remember going, walking past the gym and there was this huge event and people were walking down the carpet and I, and I, and I was just starting off in radio and I'm like, 
one day, one day I'm going to walk that carpet. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I don't know what yeah. I'm going to do, but I'm going to yeah. be on that damn carpet. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm going to yeah. be talking yeah, it's about, gonna happen. but I'm up, it's going to happen. And about, I don't know, it, it was 10 years for sure. But I, I was in that, I was at that gym Yeah. outside at a red carpet event, just like I spoke about. I remember mm-hmm. walking down that carpet. I was taking pictures. People were interviewing me about my story as a cancer survivor. My, uh-huh. my first, my first position as Latino national spokesperson, and my fight that was coming up. And uh-huh. and then I remember sitting down. I'm like, oh my god, I, I, I dreamt about this moment. You know? Yes, and, yes, and, yes, and, yes. And that's why. And that's why I don't never, never, never forget how I got here. I know I have a, a long journey ahead of me, but I yeah, love yeah. I love the journey that I'm on getting there. Yeah, because every day it's it's a wonderful feeling because I get to talk to creative people like you and Davi yeah, and, yeah. and everybody else. And then I got I got a tech company that wants to to, to sponsor me. Yeah, yeah, me yeah, like yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. during this during this whole pandemic, this, I got a phone call from this from this tech company in Chicago called B Tech. Shout out to Xavier. They, Shout they, out. He, he called me and he says, we, we love your journey. We love your charisma. We love how you, because they saw me, they saw me at an event where I was speaking. They goes, we yeah. love the way you talk to people. We love the way you touch people. We love the way you yeah. interact with people. We love yeah. how you went from 280 pounds to where you're at today. Um, we just love it. And we want to be able to like develop an app where people can can connect with you and, and yeah. learn about what you're eating and how you're eating, what supplements you're taking, how you choose the workout clothes that you're getting, like all that stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. And I said, me? Yeah. yeah. And I said, so it's, I mean, and all of this d- doesn't happen, isn't given to you. I worked, I don't make no mistake. I've worked mm-hmm. really hard. I've mm-hmm. sacrificed a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, when people mm-hmm. are out at, when people are out at the clubs, I'm at the gym, yep. you know, I'm at the gym at five. Well, when it was open, I was at the gym at five o'clock in the morning, yeah. doing, putting, putting in the work. Then I would yeah. go to work after yeah. work. I would hit the gym again. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. while and then I I said goodbye to the tacos, I said goodbye to the pizzas, I said goodbye to I'm, Come on. I'm eating I'm eating cleaner foods, digestible yeah. foods. Yes, yes, yes. Foods yes. That, that, you know, no no sugar, like all that stuff. I yeah. my car my carbohydrate intakes are in the morning because I need it to fuel my body, but I don't need it at yeah. night. So I, all that stuff I had to learn. Yeah. And 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 because I, I know I know what I want, I know what it's I know mm-hmm. what it takes to get there. And yeah, and I want my daughter to be proud of me. That's what Come I want. On, so my Come life, on, man. I know, I know now that my mm-hmm. life has purpose. My life has, my life has. Um, there's a reason why I'm here. Whether yeah. it's wh- whether yeah. it's helping moms guide their kids to a better understanding of their bodies and and yeah. and cancer yeah. and all that stuff, or mm-hmm. or it's me being an example to my daughter, or yeah. or me just. Being happy because being happy is yeah. hard. It's a mm. choice. You you, you have to choice. choose. It's so yes. easy. It's so easy to to just be a negative person. It's so easy yeah. to to yeah. judge to judge yeah. someone. It's yes. so easy to yes. not take yes. accountability. You know, yes. it's it's yes. hard work, but yes. if you put in the work, the yes. rewards are so so gratifying. Yes. I I know I know I I could be doing better, but I'm yeah. never gonna be unhappy with what I have. Because what That's I good. have, I have enough. I have a roof over my head. I have food on my mm-hmm. plate. I have a, mm-hmm. a, a healthy, happy daughter. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need anything else. I have all, all I'll ever need, I already have. Everything else Come that, on, I, man. that I get, everything else that comes into my life is a blessing from God. And I don't That's ever take up. that for granted. That's what's up. Bro, That's you're amazing. You're amazing. All right. So, a couple quick things. Tell how me? much weight did, How much weight did you lose? I, I oh, my gosh. Well, I started off at two, two eighty, two eighty. Okay. I was two eighty, and it was a hard two eighty. Like I, two eighty, yeah. And uh-huh. and it was, and all I did, all I did was work out. I worked at the gym. I I yeah. I, I was like, I gotta yeah. get a job. At, I gotta get a job at this gym because this is where I need yeah. to be. Yeah. So I worked at I, the gym. I was always there, always. When mm-hmm. I wasn't, when I wasn't there, I was at that meal prep company. 
and I was, good. I was, I was eating good. good. And then good. it was, it was blocks from the gym. So I was, that was my life for like yeah. two years. Yeah. And, and I ended up, I became a professional fighter during that process. That was the next question. Yeah. I, you got to share that. I, you got to share I that. Became, I, I remember I was during my journey. I remember when I was, I was at 280 and then I dropped to, to 200. I, I went down okay. all the way to 200 yeah. and I, I was at the gym and this guy approached me. He's like, we need an opponent for my fighter. Are you interested? And I said, wow. I said, I'm not a professional fighter. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that. Yeah, and then yeah. he's like, Look, just say yes. We'll take care of the rest. I would have said as long as it's not Mike Tyson. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good boss, my... It's all good, brother. Okay, we got a few minutes left. Sorry, Go for it. Okay. So anyway, um, I said yes, right? Yeah. What do I do? He's like, "Well, you're gonna fight at 175." I said, like, "What? <sighs> not even in high school." Was I 175? Oh man! I was like, okay, I had 30 days, 30 days to drop 30 pounds. 30 days, okay. Wow! All right. I had. I was. I. I left my. I left my house. I moved into the gym where I was training. That was. That became my job. That became Understood. my life. I woke up mm -hmm. in the morning, training. I trained all day. Trained all day. Trained all day. Trained all day. Then I. My food became a lot more strict. I. I had mm -hmm. a fighter's life. I. I yeah. It's like I was drinking eight ounces of water a day, a day, eight a day. ounces eight or ounces 80. A day. I had to because I had to I had to when I walk on that scale, I got to be 175. I was so one. Wait, so you were only drinking eight ounces a day. I, well, only eight ounces of no salt. I had no salt in my diet. I wow. Was I was eating raw vegetables, uncooked yep. raw vegetables. Yep. I was. I love them. Out, I drained the tuna, tuna out of the can, no unsalted. Like that was my life. Wow. The night before, the night before weigh-ins, I was still nine pounds overweight. I had to drop the night before. I had to drop nine pounds. Okay. My wow. trainer picked me up, took me to Crunch Fitness over in Chatsworth. Yeah, and we went to the sauna. We bought two, two buckets of the Abilene cream. And, okay. And oh yeah. Uh huh. I would uh -huh. To, he would he would grease me up. I'd be in the sauna, shadow boxing, jumping jacks, all that stuff. And then I would come out of there. He'd take the grease off. I'd get in the shower, cold. You know, I was because we had to shock the body. So I'd be yeah. in the cold shower, and yeah. he'd be in there. He'd be in the shower with me. Because he didn't, because man, eight ounces of water a day is nothing. Like I, I would, know, I, he would jump in the shower with me to make sure I'm not drinking the water. And um, and because mm. it got, I got so desperate that I would go in the sauna and I'd see people leave their water behind, and I'd make sure he wasn't looking. Like, okay, <laughs> and and that's how. Bad wow. It and we did we did that all night until. I, I ended up at 174. I did it. I got down to 174.4. 174.4. Wow. And, wow. and then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go home. He's like, you ain't going home. He took me to his house. I, he slept right next to me. So I wouldn't get up wow. in the middle of the night. Like he made sure I did because anything I put in my mouth at this point, because mm -hmm. you know, when, when, you, when you starve your body like that, the first thing that yep. was in your mouth, you're probably going to gain like 10 pounds. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I woke up in the morning, and then weigh-ins weren't until two o'clock the next day. I was freaking. I was like, this, this nightmare was never gonna end. Um, we, I remember, we woke up in the morning. We went to the drugstore. We bought some some Pedialyte, some electrolytes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then I, we just waited. You know, the physician took our physicals to make sure that we were okay to fight. We were mentally able to fight. Mm -hmm. um, we were. I got on the scale, and if you go to my, if you go onto my, onto my Instagram. There's okay. a post where you can see me. I'm all like really skinny and yeah, yeah, 174. And I got on the scale, and I did. I got I was 174.5. After I got weighed in, my trainer yeah. he, he threw a, the Pedialyte. I caught it, chugged it. Oh my god, I was I was good. So glad, we went, right? We, <laughs> we went to the we went to the Olive Garden. I yeah, had my yeah. Pasta, and then yeah. I was I was good. 
The yeah. next day, the fight, the day of the fight came, we went in, they had, because they, they weigh you a second time to make sure you didn't gain too much weight. Okay. And, and then I gained, I gained 10, I walked in, I, I weighed 184. Wow. I, and all I had was that one bowl of pasta. I had the Pedialyte. Wow. Pasta, and I was at one, that this is what, and this is why it's very important when people, um, I don't diet. I never diet. Yeah. I don't believe yeah. in diets. I just believe in healthier eating. That's it. Absolutely. Because I don't, Absolutely. I don't believe in, because diets, they're, they last for like a month and then you, yep. you, you, you crash yep. and then you gain yep. the weight. That's why I don't believe in diets. So yeah. this is why I don't tell people Atkins, not meant for dieting. It's a, it's a health thing. You don't do. So and yeah. that's why, because you, 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 you cheat, you're cheating your body from all these, these nutrients and whatever. And then yep. when you, when you go a month without it and then you cheat, yep. you cheat for one day and then boom. Yep. Right back where you you're right back where you started. Yeah, so, yeah. That this is why all and this is there's another reason like all these experiences that I went through, yeah. I, they were like bits and pieces that I took. Yeah. And now when, yeah. when I talk to people and they they ask for help, I'm able to draw from all these experiences and I'm able to talk to them. Good. You know, like women, like good, most of the women, good, good, good. I don't train. Women, people come up to me. Are you a trainer? No, I don't, I'm not a trainer. I don't. I'm not a certified trainer. I'm not a nutritionist. Yeah. I'm not any of that. But yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want my help, I can I can talk to you about what I did and what worked for right. me. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 I'll ask women like, you know, what's what's going on? In, what's going on in your life? And they're like, yeah. well, like, it was like what you were saying. Like, I'm I'm I find myself eating all the time, and I said, well, what's going on in your life? Yeah. Because it's true. I remember that I couldn't. I was killing myself at the gym, and I was never losing any weight because yep. I wasn't right. I had to find I had to find my motivation. I had to find my focus. Once once you're okay up here and, and then the rest here, will work. Everything else will fall into place. And once yeah, I, it will. And this is why people enjoy talking to me. This is why I had so many referrals because the woman was like that that guy Bruno. He he's he does he doesn't want my money. I mean I pay him, but when I, I always want to pay him up front, and he never takes my money because. I don't. If 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 I can't get you to where you want to be, if I don't, if I can't right. get you to a place, if I can't get to get you to a place of trust and yeah. and 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 make you feel like you're accomplishing something, then I'm yep. not taking your money because I'm not doing That's my right. job. That's right. That's right. I'm not, right. I'm not here like like I said. Yeah. I need, I need money too. I gotta pay my bills, but money yeah. doesn't drive me. Yeah, passion does. Money money doesn't drive me. My goal isn't to make to take people's money because when you do that, you're not really. Involved yeah. or you're engaged yeah. in their lives. So yeah. when, when I make when I make money the buy factor and I make their lives the priority, yeah. You yeah. Know, they're able to find their their inner peace. They're they're able to find. Yeah, their that's what and we then, do. Then, then when they come, like, oh my god, bro, I lost three pounds. I lost four pounds, and then say it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and that's just the beginning yeah. because now now yeah. you got your body in motion, and once you start going, yeah. now when you start going full force, and the weight's yeah. gonna melt right off, and blah blah blah, yeah. and. And yep. yeah, and that's that. That's, that's it. You know, acting was the catalyst, but it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't where I. It, it's not where I'm finding my. Because acting makes me happy. Performing makes me happy. I yeah. love when I'm on stage and I and I and I deliver yeah. a line that makes people laugh. That is yeah. so self. It's so self gratifying. Yeah. But becoming an actor has given me a, a, a different platform to be able to like. You know, people mm -hmm. know me in California. Yeah. A lot of people know me now, and 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 they they follow me and and they listen to That's me, awesome. and send me messages, and they ask me for yeah. advice. And, yeah. and I'm like, it's just me. Like, I, there's nothing yeah. really, there's nothing really extraordinary about me. I'm just a guy that found his way, kind yeah. of. Yeah, and, yeah. And so I've learned how my body works and how yeah. my mind works and how I need to take care of it. So, yep. and what makes me happy and what I need to do to keep myself happy. So yep. I, that's what I found. And that's what I'm trying to Good. help people find in themselves. Good. So because tell me this, elements. how can they find, how can they follow you? We got one minute okay. and we got to close it. How can they okay. follow I, you? I, I am, I'm maxed out on Facebook, but I'm okay. on Facebook and Bruno Chicampos, but I'm, I'm maxed out. So okay. I'm asking everybody to follow me on, on Instagram. It's Bruno okay. G Campos official. Okay. Follow me there. I'm I'm always accepting DMs. I, I reply to everybody. Um, Excellent. I do lives. You know, people send me questions. I, yep. I do live conversations with everybody. Excellent. And that, yeah, that's where you can find me. Perfect. I don't know how to do Twitter and I don't TikTok. I don't know how to TikTok either. It's all so. good. Listen, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you 
friends we have maxed our time we will have bruno on again you can catch us on real talk real women live coming up yes. very very soon and until next wednesday be well thank you bro